Greetings, this is Dyslexi. In today's episode of Video Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures, we'll be going over basic infantry procedures for loading and unloading from helicopters. Our starting state is a team out in the wild, needing pickup in enemy territory. The team leader has called in for extract, the pickup zone has been selected, and the team leader has moved to it and taken up security positions. The team leader is essential towards this process going smoothly and quickly. They're responsible for getting to the pickup zone safely, securing it before the aircraft arrive, and expediting the load-up process once the aircraft arrive. Security of the LZ or PZ is paramount, and the difference between success and failure can come down to whether a team leader appropriately positioned his troops in advance of the arrival. All team members pull security while awaiting the aircraft's arrival. They listen for their team leader, and in the event that they become a casualty, the next in line quickly takes command to ensure that the team is able to continue the loading process without undue delay. As a helo makes its final approach, everyone makes sure that they're out of the way. You can start to move in the general direction of the anticipated touchdown point, but don't get in the way of the actual landing. If in doubt, simply back away from the helo or move closer to obstacles that it won't be landed on boulders, trees, etc. This ensures that you won't become an additional obstacle while they're trying to land. Once the helo has landed or is hovering for pickup, team members move to board it at the leader's direction. Watch for your team leader. If they start running for the helo, that's your cue. When approaching a landed or hovering helicopter, always do so from the sides. Approaching from the rear introduces the possibility of tail rotor strikes, particularly if the pilot needs to rapidly change orientation during the final moments of landing. Approaching from the front can be dangerous while on slopes or similar terrain where the blades might be close to the ground. Approaching from the side allows the pilot and crew to see you coming and more easily perceive when everyone's loaded up. It may also allow the door gunners to fire without the risk of friendlies running across their line of fire. Crouching while running the board is also a good idea as it puts you that much lower than the rotor disc. If you have to cross around to the other side of a helo, do so when possible by running past the front, well away from the rotor disc if it's low. This allows the pilot to see you and know that they're waiting for you, whereas going around the back will be unnoticed and you may find yourself either decapitated by the tail or left rather lonely in the LZ when the helo suddenly departs. Note that there will be times where the geometry of the LZ makes it impossible to avoid passing by the tail on the way to boarding. But whatever the situation, just be aware that the tail rotor is hazardous and it should be given as wide of a berth as is feasible. If the aircraft is landing or hovering over slope terrain, ensure you approach the boarding site from downhill in order to avoid running into the main rotor. Be quick about boarding. Don't linger outside the aircraft trying to provide covering fire. Instead, mount quickly so that the aircraft can take off as soon as possible. The best defense is to get out of the LZ quickly. Door gunners can take over once all troops are loaded, and they're typically much more efficient than a rifleman standing outside the helo. The team leader maintains accountability of their team members as they load up. They're the last one to load from their team, and they'll act as a covering element while their teammates are boarding. When their team is fully loaded, they communicate this to the squad leader by stating their fire team's name, such as Alpha 2, and that they're loaded. If they're the only element loading into a helo, such as when boarding an MH6, they make sure the pilot knows that the element is fully loaded when the helo can take off. Remember that while you should attempt to board with your team when possible, there will be times where the confusion of battle will cause people to get into the wrong aircraft, or perhaps your assigned aircraft may land in an unexpected position and have a different element load into it. When this happens, simply go with the flow. Find an alternate aircraft aboard and communicate this to your team leader. The important thing is to get everyone out of the hot zone as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter if you're in the correct helo, so long as you did get into a helo and your team leader knows it. It's much better to get out of a hot LZ in the wrong helo than to die in that LZ on the right helo because it was delayed by the confused action of those trying to board. Many aircraft will have only a single assigned crew chief manning one of the guns at any given time. When loading, you may have the option to get in as a door gunner to take the other gun. If so, remember that you should be extremely careful if firing while troops are loading or unloading, 
as it's very easy for armor to place someone in the way of the muzzle inadvertently. Try to restrain the bulk of your fire until the aircraft's actually taking off, and then you can feel free to suppress known or likely enemy positions with controlled and deliberate bursts. You should always have a very good picture of the disposition of friendly and enemy forces before you begin using the door gun, and don't forget to listen for pilot commands if you're on a gun. While in transit, take a look at the LZ, if you know it, and familiarize yourself with the basic layout of it, the expected enemy directions, and possible cover or concealment near the landing site. This helps you make quicker decisions once you're actually on the ground. When dismounting, always wait for the aircraft crew to call for you to dismount. They know better than you do when they're actually landed or they've come to a stable hover. Dismounting early can make for a nasty fall as well as cause issues with the pilot. Remember that if the aircraft is landing or hovering over sloped terrain, you need to ensure that you move down slope while dismounting to avoid running into the main rotor. Once you've dismounted, move away from the aircraft and take either a covered, concealed, or low profile position. Spread out to ensure that any fire directed towards the aircraft won't strike clusters of dismounting troops. If you have positive identification on the enemy, a clear sector of fire, and permissive rules of engagement, call out your contacts and engage them automatically. The team leader will observe his team dismount, and when all clear, they'll tell a helicopter via the radio, shouting, or with a hand signal or salute. This will cue the healer to depart, and the infantry will go on with their mission. If the aircraft you're riding on or about to mount is disabled in an LZ due to enemy fire, collision with terrain or obstacles or any other cause, immediately move away and return to providing security for the LZ until given further orders by your team or squad leader. Don't cluster around wounded or dead and don't stick near the aircraft as it may explode, especially if it's attracting enemy fire. Spread out and keep fighting. The same can be said if your helo is shot down en route to somewhere else. Once you've safely landed, get out form a perimeter, call it in, and wait for further orders or for help to arrive. And there you have it, that's how to be part of the solution to expedited helo loading and unloading. Keeping all of this in mind will go a long way towards simplifying life for your pilots, and also contribute towards speedier insertion and extraction phases to a mission, which in turn can significantly help to reduce casualties. It's on every player to know what to do when the time comes, and hopefully this has helped clear up some of the issues that can accompany these situations. This episode of Video Tactics, Techniques, and Procedures was brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more in the future, take a look at my page, which you can find here. Thanks again to those who have shown their support, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. This is Dyslexi, and until next time, take care.